Greetings, Kalaga! My name is Leia, your future nurse. I will show you today the health assessment for cardiovascular system. But before that, I will just briefly discuss this area for more understanding. Cardiovascular system are also known as circulatory system. It consists of the heart, the blood, and the blood vessels. It is responsible for transporting the blood throughout the body, wherein cells receive oxygen, nutrients, hormones, and other substances that needed by the other systems. And it also removes gaseous wastes from the body. The equipment needed in conducting this assessment is the stethoscope. It is a medical instrument for detecting or listening sounds produced in the body or for auscultation. And a centimeter ruler or tape measure for the inspection of distension of the jugular vein. Now, let's do the procedure. Prior to the assessment, we need first to identify the client to give the right care and management to them. Introduce yourself to the patient and explain clearly the procedure because it allows the patient to understand and encourages compliance throughout the assessment. Provide privacy by drawing the curtains and closing the door to allay fear and anxiety. Before you perform the entire assessment, do not forget to wash properly your hands for infection control or reduce the spread of microorganisms. You can also use gloves to protect the patient and at the same time, protect yourself as the healthcare provider. Aside from that, instruct the patient to void first, to have a continuous procedure and to be not distracted when performing the assessment. Then, obtain the health history of the patient. Good morning, sir. How are you? Well, I'm fine, thank you. May I know your name and your birthday? My name is Lex Machu. Viaje Combal, sir. My birthday is August 28 with 30. Um, okay, my name is Leia, your nurse for today. I would like to ask your permission because I am going to assess your cardiovascular system to check if there's any abnormalities in the area. But before that, I will just ask some couple of questions regarding to the assessment. Is that okay with you, sir? Yes, it's fine. Okay. Okay. Do you have any complaints in your body? Do you feel any chest pain or in your extremities? No. Okay. Do you experience or do you have any trouble in breathing like shortness of breath and have you experienced dizziness or headache? No. Do you have any medications that you intake? If there is, can you please tell me? Yes, I drink saline and apple corn and I take them every morning in one spoon. So then, is your family has a history of having hypertension, lung disease, or coronary heart disease? No. May I know what is your usual activity? I'm playing chess with my father and I'm taking care of my dog and chicken. That's good. Do you exercise regularly? Um, if yes, what type of exercise you do? Yes, sometimes I walk, run, and stretch. Okay. Now, let's begin with your assessment. First, instruct the client. Explain that you will be looking at the head, neck, and extremities to provide clues to cardiac function. And assure the client that you will stop anytime if the procedure causes a discomfort or fatigue. Position the client. Begin the examination with the client seated upright and the chest are exposed. Then, in supine position, and so on according to the procedures. Inspect the client's face, lips, ears, and scalp. These structures can provide variable clues to the client's cardiovascular status. Inspect the jugular veins. This will provide essential information about the client's central nervous pressure and the heart's pumping efficiency. Then, inspect the distension of the jugular veins and inspect the carotid arteries. Sir, I'm going to assess your head, neck, and extremities. Tell me if the procedure is causing you a discomfort or fatigue. I can stop anytime. Um, other than that, I might ask you to do some positions that needed to be done according to the procedure for
for better assessment of your cardiovascular system. Yes, it's okay. First, can you please sit upright because I am going to inspect your face, lips, ears, and skull. Okay, sir, I can see that your eyes are uniform, your sclera is whitish, and your conjunctiva is pinkish, and you have a smooth eyelid. The general appearance of your face is uniform and flat. Your ears and lips are symmetrical, your lips are pinkish, and in your scalp, I do not see any lesions, um, bumps, or lumps, and there's no presence of bluish discoloration or paleness. And also, there's no presence of protruding areas. I can see that you can hold your head steadily. Overall, there's no presence of abnormalities. Please lay down on your bed in a supine position with the head of the bed elevated between 30 to 45 degrees because I am going to inspect your jugular veins and carotid arteries. Okay, sir, can you please look up to your left side slightly? Okay. Okay. Now, to your right side. Okay, sir, your jugular vein it distends only about 3 cm and your carotid arteries both are visible. There's no presence of abnormalities. Remember, in the inspection of the face, lips, ears, and scalp, if you see bluish discoloration or paleness, it indicates increased perfusion or oxygenation, which is abnormal. While in the jugular vein distension, it should not be visible when in an upright position or when the head of the bed is at 30 or 45 degrees. Note that normally it distends only to about 3 cm when the client is lying at 45 degree angle. The internal jugular vein is best indicator of central venous pressure. It is located behind the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Regarding to the carotid arteries, pulsation should be visible bilaterally with the client lying at 45 degree angle. It is located lateral to the trachea and medial to the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Let's proceed to the inspection of the client's hands and fingers, then the client's chest. Observe the client's respiratory pattern, the veins on the chest, inspect the entire chest, and observe for pulsation over the five key landmarks. Next, inspect the client's abdomen. Look for the pulsation in the abdominal area which major arteries are located. Then, inspect the client's leg. Okay, sir, I'm going to inspect your hands and fingers. I can see that your fingertips are round and even. Your fingernails are pink. Okay, I will just do capillary refill. It goes back less than 3 seconds. The other side. Okay, it also goes back less than 3 seconds. Your hands are warm to touch and I don't see any paleness or bluish color. The sensation and movement of your fingers are intact. Sir, I am now going to inspect your chest. Um, can you please remove your t-shirt for better assessment? In your entire chest. Sir, your respiratory pattern is even, regular on labor, and no retraction. While the veins on your chest is evenly distributed and they are relatively flat, um, there's no presence of bulges and masses. Color of your chest have fair complexions and the intercostal space and your clavicle is even. There's no presence of deformities, scars, or any abnormal pulsations upon observation. To your abdominal area, I do not see any discomfort or difficulty of breathing. Sir, can 
can you please sit upright because I am going to inspect your legs. Okay. Your legs skin color is even and uniform including the hair distribution. Your toes, feet, and legs are symmetrical. They are proportional to your body. Sir, I'm going to assess your capillary field. goes back less than 3 seconds. Okay, it also goes back less than 3 seconds. There's no presence of lesion, edema, swelling, tenderness, and redness. Although, I do not see any abnormalities upon inspection. Note that abnormality in the inspection of the hands, fingers, and legs are the cyanosis or pallor which indicates decreased perfusion. Also, when doing the capillary refill, if it does not go back within 2-3 to three seconds, it indicates insufficient oxygenation of the blood. Remember, edema is an abnormality, which is the accumulation of fluid in the tissues. If there's a presence of unilateral warmth, redness, tenderness, swelling in the calf, or sudden onset intense sharp muscle pain, it indicates of having a deep vein thrombosis. For deformities, scars, or any abnormal pulsations in the extremities, it indicates an underlying condition or injury. Let's move forward in the inspection of the client's skeletal structure. Ask the patient to stand, then observe the skeletal structure, neck, and extremities. Palpate the chest in six areas. Palpate each area with the client exhaling and finally holding the breath if able to do so. And palpate the client's carotid pulses. Palpate each carotid pulse separately to prevent having an obstruction to the client's carotid arteries. Sir, can you please stand? to further observe your skeletal structure. As I observe to your skeletal structure, it is free from deformities, scars, lesions, and protruding areas. And your neck and extremities are proportional to your torso. You can now sit upright. Sir, I am going to palpate your chest in six areas. I need you to exhale and hold your breath. Repeat the procedure until I say so. Okay, I'm going to start. Okay, sir, I feel the pulse and do you feel any pain when I palpate? No. Okay, good. Your skin is warm and dry, absence of edema. Now I am going to palpate your carotid pulses. First to your right. Then to your left. Both demonstrated an equal intensity and regular pattern upon palpation. In general, I don't see any problem in your chest, skeletal structure, and your carotid pulses upon inspection and palpation. Take note that the palpation in the chest can be done with a client sitting upright, reclining on a 45 degree angle, 30 degree angle, or lying flat. It is also important to palpate the carotid pulses to assess their presence, strength, and equality. The abnormalities you can find here is absent, weak, thready, or bounding pulses. While in the extremities of the skin, the abnormality is the skin is cool, 
excessively warm or experiencing diaphoretic. Let's proceed in the percussion of the client's chest to determine the cardiac border. Help the client to a reclining position at the lowest angle if possible. Then, do the indirect percussion by placing the middle finger of your non-dominant hand in the fifth intercostal space, left anterior axillary line. Sir, can you please lay down again in a supine position because I am going to percuss your chest. Please, sir, I am going to percuss now your chest in your fifth intercostal space, left anterior axillary line. I hear a resonant sound. It is a strong, deep intone because I am over in your lung tissue upon percussion. After percussing the patient's chest, you must auscultate the client's chest using the diaphragm of the stethoscope, following the five key landmarks for auscultation. Then auscultate again the client's chest using the bell of the stethoscope. Place the bell over the five key landmarks for auscultation, then listen if there's a third heart sound or fourth heart sound or murmur. Other than that, auscultate the carotid arteries of the patient. Listen to the diaphragm and bell of the stethoscope. Have the patient hold their breath briefly. Then later on, compare the apical pulse to the carotid pulse by auscultating the apical pulse while simultaneously palpating the carotid pulse of the patient. Sir, please can you sit upright again because I am going to auscultate your chest. I am going to auscultate your chest following the five key landmarks for auscultation. Okay, sir, your right sternal border, second intercostal space, the second heart sound are louder than the first heart sound. Now to the left sternal border, second intercostal space, second heart sound is also louder than the first heart sound. Now to your left sternal border, third intercostal space, both first heart sound and second heart sounds are equal in intensity. Now to your left sternal border, fourth intercostal space, the first heart sound is louder than the second heart sound. Your apex or your fifth external border, left midclavicular line. The first heart sound is also louder than the second heart sound. Um, it indicates normal. Now I am going to auscultate again your chest using the bell of the stethoscope. I didn't hear third heart sound or fourth heart sound or a murmur. It indicates normal. Next, I am going to auscultate your carotid arteries. I hear the heart tones and it is essentially normal. Okay, sir, can you please lay down on your bed because I am going to compare your apical pulse to your carotid pulse. I am going to compare your apical pulse to your carotid pulse. Just breathe. Okay, sir. Your apical pulse and carotid pulse are beating synchronously. It implies normal result. 
Remember, in the five key landmarks for auscultation, when you listen over the right sternal border, second intercostal space, the second heart sound should be louder than the first heart sound because since this site is located over the aortic valve. The next one is over the left sternal border, second intercostal space. This site is the pulmonic valve where the second heart sound should also be louder than the first heart sound. Then over the left sternal border, third intercostal space or also called herbs point, both first heart sound and second heart sounds are equal in intensity. While at the left sternal border, fourth intercostal space, the first heart sound should be louder than the second heart sound because of the closure of tricuspid valve. Listening over the apex at the fifth intercostal space, left midclavicular line, in this location, first heart sound should also be louder than the second heart sound because of the closure of the mitral valve. Remember, if we hear the third heart sound and fourth heart sound, it means abnormality in the heart. While in the carotid arteries, if you hear the carotid bruit sound, it indicates narrowing of the blood vessels. And when you compare the apical pulse to the carotid pulse, it should be synchronously. If not, then there's possible there is an abnormality. The last procedure for the auscultation, repeat the auscultation over the five key landmarks of the client's chest, have the clients lean forward in supine position, then in left lateral position. Here I'm going to repeat the auscultation in your chest in a supine position. Next is the left lateral position. Is it okay with you, sir? Yes, it's fine. Now to your left lateral position. Remember to document all the findings you gathered, then evaluate the other needs of the client. Clean the equipments used and wash properly your hands for infection control. If you use gloves, discard it, then place it to the correct receptacle. I hope I clearly demonstrated the health assessment for cardiovascular system. Once again, Kaalaga, your future nurse, Love, Leia. See you and thanks for watching. Bye!